quarterback reigns in the hands of Brooke Barringer. Inauspicious debut, a partially collapsed lung in his first career start against Wyoming. That proved his physical toughness. He finished the game. His mental game has been getting stronger and stronger. His confidence improving his week. So is his passing, but he's not been in anything like this. Steve Cyphers talked to Barringer and the rest of the guys in that bizarre quarterback carousel of Nebraska. Steve? Chris, I'll tell you what, Brooke Barringer is very excited about this game because he is healthy and he can run the whole playbook this week. You know, he's proven more than capable because had he enough stamp, snaps, he would be ranked second in the Big 8 in passing efficiency. But that's not the problem here. Look at the depth chart of the Nebraska quarterback, and that's where you start to see that there isn't a whole lot of experience. And to quote Keith Jackson, oh, Nelly. <laughs> chart quarterback is a ladder in Lincoln, you might want to climb with caution. What goes through the average Nebraska fan's mind if Brooke has to leave the game? They all try to take a big deep breath and say, oh my God. <laughs> it's the unknown, the unproven that fans fear, because right below Brooke Barringer is a colorful cast of non-scholarship subs. It begins with a walk-on from Wahoo. Sophomore Matt Turman started against Oklahoma State. But his career started in the secondary. Told him I didn't want to play uh, defense, and they put me a receiver for my first year here. And then switched to quarterback after that, and, and then straight up the net chart ever since. Until last week, when Turman left the game with a badly bruised shoulder. That's when Monte Cristo, not the book, not the movie, not the sandwich, but the freshman quarterback from Kearney gave up what would have been a redshirt year by entering the game. The count could be number two against Colorado, and he understands your concern. Here you've got some, you know, walk-on freshman from the middle of Nebraska, you know, that's taking on the number two team in the nation now, and leading the number three team in the nation. And the coach? Is he comfortable with the count? Well, I'd be comfortable because he's all we got. And you, <laughs> you can't manufacture somebody. But you can improvise. Take fourth teamer Adam Kutra, a student manager turned quarterback. He actually played against Pacific, and fans in Lincoln call him Rudy. In general, a fair comparison, Adam says, but not really. He didn't get into the uh, game until the very end of his senior year. I got in at the beginning of my freshman year. And then there's fifth team freshman Ryan Held. I've never played quarterback in my life. A walk-on wide receiver, he volunteered to quarterback the scout team. Later, like Kutra, he played against Pacific. Barringer, Turman, Christo, Kutra, and Held, all five have seen game time. And just for good measure, wingback Cluster Johnson, a quarterback in high school, took snaps in practice. I can still throw good, and I, I feel like I can run good. It's a what's wrong with this picture proposition. One of the top teams in the country competing with five quarterbacks, but only Barringer has a scholarship. And he missed time with a collapsed lung. With that, our last scholarship quarterback, we've got... Uh, uh, a group of walk-ons, and, and not to, uh, to take any away from, anything away from them. They're, they're good athletes, but, uh, you know, it, it's just an unusual situation for a program like Nebraska to be down to that. But it is, and here's why. This year's scholarship freshman took off when Christo passed him on the depth chart. And long before Tommy Frazier was sidelined, last year's promising redshirt freshman Ben Roots transferred to an Oklahoma junior college. He didn't want to wait around for Frazier to graduate. I've been asked questions over and over whether, you know, I regret leaving and all that stuff. No, uh, I'm having a great time here playing, and uh, that's the reason I left to go somewhere else and do something else. For roots or no roots, the growth continues in the wing column, with Barrier in control and the not-so-famous foursome right behind. I believe that we've proved to people, though, here in the last two or three ball games that we're a football team, and uh, whoever the quarterback is, we're going to win the football game no matter what it takes. No matter their backgrounds or abilities, the Nebraska QBs all have one thing in common. Each one believes that, if called upon, he will get the job done. All the way down to Ryan Hell. The guy upstairs would have to help me a lot, and he'd have to give me something I've never even dreamed about doing, and just let me just make some spectacular plays if it ever came to that. But Ryan says he doesn't think he'll get in the game, and you don't need to worry about that. With me now, of course, is Tommy Frazier. Tommy, first thing everybody wants to know, how you feeling? How's treating? Well, I'm feeling fine. The treatment's coming along. I'll, I'm coming in every day and get, get tested, uh, tested for my PT. And other than that, everything's going fine. All right, you've been around the team all morning. You've been in the locker room all week. Give me the inside scoop on this game. Well, the defense knows the main thing they got to do is stop, stop Rashawn Salam. If they can do that, then there's no way that they're going to beat them. Colorado's going to beat them on the pass. And all 
whole offense worry about is establishing the running game like we've been trying to do all year. If we do that, then we, we have the game won easily. Won easily? Easily. Right, last thing for you, is there any way that you'd be ready to play January 1st? Well, the time will tell. All I'm going to do is sit back in his way. And all the time, well, time is what I need right now in the hill. That's what I'm getting. So time will tell. Interesting. There's a possibility. Tommy, thank you very much. Chris, that's it from the field. Back to you.